as buttery a thing as you're ever going to want to touch. Those of you that touch butter. (laughs) (laughs) Take no offense. But he had a sticker (laughs) on the guitar. And it was, and it actually looked cool, but I would never do that. I'm so just like, can you hand me the instrument and I'll see if I can make it sound good, guy? I'm the same way. And, you know, so I'm, I am not the, well, let me tell you about the pickup. And let's give it a... All right, cool. Hello, Hans. Welcome to our second episode together of Gear Talk. We have the Dusenberg today. Yes. So tell me, when did you first come across the name Dusenberg? Uh, I was uh, playing. Or actually, I was probably visiting the thing, an event that happens here in Southern California called the Harvest Crusade. And there was a band called Big Tent Revival and Randy Williams was the first guy that I saw, first guitar player I saw playing a Duesenberg. And I'm pretty sure he's actually playing this model. And that model is a... A Star Player TV. Star Player TV. Okay, cool. Yeah. And uh, I remember, well, first of all, he's like great rock and roll guitar player, which is, that's kind of what this is. This is definitely, well, it's a, it's a very flexible guitar, but ultimately is intended to be kind of a rock machine. And uh, I remember being struck, first of all, because it's a super sleek looking guitar. And then he did something that I never would ever do to any of my guitars. And please, if this is you, take no offense. (laughs) But he had a sticker (laughs) on the guitar. And it was, and it actually looked cool, but I would never do that. But I remember thinking, wow, that looks really cool, but I would never do that. But that, that's, so that's my first experience seeing it. And then it just, I, I hadn't heard of them before that. And so this would probably be, I don't know, mid 2000s. So 2005-ish, somewhere around there. And uh, um, I remember thinking, that is a really cool guitar. It sounds amazing. And then I hadn't heard of it before. And then within the span of like a year, the guitar was all over the place, especially in the Christian music scene. It was all over the place. And then I discovered that it was not just that scene. It was, you know, Joe Walsh, Mike Campbell, um, ACDC. Lots of great artists were playing these guitars. The Duesenberg, multiple, di- all sorts of different models. But this is definitely like one of the Cadillac models of the... Of the this is like their... I think this is their first... Um, this was the first flagship model. I, maybe that's overstating it, but. And what makes it feel great in your hands? Well, I, I mean, I love all my kids. <laughs> you know, I love all my children, my strats, my tellies. Oh, I have a, I'm like I said, make, I make that sound like I have multiples. No, I, I love my strat. I love my telecaster. I love, I do have a couple less balls. I love my less balls. I think this actually, by degree, might be my favorite guitar I've ever played. Wow. What, what, how, describe that quality of it. What, what makes it rise to the top over the others? Some of it is just ethereal. You know, it's just like, it's just how it feels in my hands. And I don't know how to describe that uh, in, in the sense of how it varies from other guitars. Uh, I mean, each one has its own particular unique thing, but um, it, first of all, it's a supremely well manufactured instrument. So everything about it, it plays perfectly. It, um, it's in tune. Uh, This guitar has an amazing ability to get in tune. I can put it in its case, store it away, not pick it up for a week, pull it back out. It's still perfectly in tune. Um, there's lots of technical stuff that I'm sure we'll talk about as we go through the the talk today, but um, the pickups are amazing. The tremolo system is as buttery a thing as you're ever going to want to touch. 
those of you that touch butter. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that uh, it's just the playability and how it feels. And it makes, like, I love picking it up and playing guitar. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's really interesting. So if this was at a guitar shop, do you think you would have found it immediately or is it one of those guitars that kind of because other players were kind of using it that you decided to try it you know because for me sometimes i find myself with guitar shops kind of like what you were saying last time which is i think i am drawn to the sound of an unplugged guitar even if it doesn't feel great so this one sounds to kind of do both is that is that something that you knew right from the get-go or did you like grab it and then be like, well, not only does it sound great, but it feels great. Like I, I didn't know it. I just, I heard it and I heard people playing it. And of course, I mean, it's like, it's beautiful. So, I mean, that's part of it. That's part of the package. But, um, I, I think I heard it and that's what drew me to the guitar first. Somebody else playing it and going, okay, okay. That has a sound that I don't have anywhere in my arsenal. And I want that. That's awesome. So now, now whether or not I accomplish that as I play it is a whole nother thing. I mean, because <laughs> that's kind of like searching for the perfect wave. But but yeah, that's what drew me to the guitar. And then I picked it up and was like, oh, my goodness, this guitar is like it feels so good. Does where does it stand amongst um, other popular kind of guitars? I know you were telling me that this is you were using the uh, was it the word chamber? Um or how were you describing hollow and semi-hollow? You were using a phrase. Yeah, I, I probably said that there's a chamber in there. There's So the same thing is true with this guitar. That, uh, that Well, when I was talking about it uh, before. But there's this portion of the guitar is hollow. Mm. So that's why there's the F hole there. And then it's hollow over here too. But then there's a solid block through here, which is different than like a... I don't think an ES-335, like a Gibson... There's some that are, well, specifically jazz model electric guitars. They're probably, you know, I don't, I'm, I shouldn't say that authoritatively, but there is a center block in this thing. So that is one of the things that makes this guitar special in the way it sounds. And it's an odd thing. I think it's a physical thing that how an electric guitar Electric guitars are interesting in that way, period, that uh, really, you know, you think, well, it's just this, it's it's mostly what's happening here that makes the sound, but it's really like it's it's the whole homogenous thing. It's like, how does, what is the neck made of? How does the neck fit into the guitar? What's happening here with the bridge? And then the fact that this isn't a solid body gives it this pluck thing. Let's see if I can show it. I'll turn the guitar down a little bit. That'll help. That's especially shows up when you're using the neck pick -em. There's a thing that this chamber engages and then somehow or another that gets translated to the pickup and then pickup and then it heads to the amp and then it heads to our ears. Yeah, that's a really nice sound, especially what you were referencing with the neck pickup. I guess we should transition into talking about the pickups more specifically. Yeah. Um, these are P90s. Is that what yeah, I read? Th this is a P90 and then this is their signature. I don't, mm. they have a name for it. You probably could tell me what that is. We talked about it as we were getting prepared for this. I'm I'm not... I'm so just like, can you hand me the instrument and I'll see if I can make it sound good, guy? <laughs> I'm the same way. And, you know, so I am I am not the... Well, let me tell you about the pickup. Um, <laughs> I just know that this is a humbucker. This mm -hmm. is a P90. And it's their versions of them. They're, they're unique to their, their manufacturer. This is, as with the PAFs that we talked about on the Les Paul, this is an extremely hot pickup. It'll blow up the front end of any amp, which makes it wonderful. And then this P90 ha does a thing that 
that it's very, very specific to this guitar and to, I think they have the, their P90s on some of their other guitars as well. It's, it's a very, very, very cool thing, sound. I have the name on our, on our notes. It says that it is called a Grand Vintage Humbucker and Domino P90 uh, to deliver max flexibility and an ingenious wiring. Yeah, well, and the ingenious wiring thing is, has to do, I think, a lot with the, the middle position, and we can talk about that in a second, but I think, so as a, as a, in, in the, my, the thing I'm using guitars for most of the time is I, I need them to be really, really flexible. I need to be able to go from playing a big, huge rock part rhythm a rhythm rock part to a solo then to a you know i needed to do all of the and everything in between and not every guitar can do that this guitar absolutely can be very flexible and i can go from playing a pop rock part to a hard rock part to an uh, alternative part to a very, you know, even and a funky thing too. rock rhythm stuff and then I mean that's that stuff's really great and that diversity how would you describe the difference in sound between the Domino P90 and what they call, is it the grand, the grand vintage humbucker? How would you quantify the difference sonically between those two pickups? Well, okay. So the, the as with most humbuckers, the, the sound is very pointed. Um, it's going to have, it's sh pointed and sharp, accentuating. I, there's probably a mid kind of mid frequency bump in the way they're designed and to get them to cut through and then of course lots of top end stuff whereas the 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 neck pickup is warmer probably there's words that people use like woolly you know um soft dark and because it's because uh, because it has that feature, it gives a person who is thinking about how their their part is fitting in with all the other instruments, it gives you a really great sonic palette. And I think that that's probably, I think of all the features of this guitar, the this neck pickup, when you're playing more on a ballad -y kind of side, Coupled with this tremolo system, it, there's nothing like it. So let's talk about the vibrato unit. Now, from the notes, it says that this is called the Diamond Deluxe Tremola and is the um, pinnacle of a modern classic vibrato design and reliability. So does, does that seem to hold true for your experience with this? Because how long have you had this guitar? 10 years. Wow. More. Yeah. Around that. And so, yeah, you, you mentioned intonation is great. Totally. You love the, the trem. So those two things together, you're not running into too many intonation issues. No. It sounds like. I will say this though, this, this tremolo system is not intended for like metal dive bombing. Got you it. Know, it's not for that at all. It's for, um, it's, you know, well, I mean, also my style of playing is I'm like, Sound. 
It's it's intended for effect, as opposed to. I mean, I guess it's all effect, but it's subtle, which is is really great because in music, like subtlety is kind of the, you know, it's like a chef is building a great sauce and they know how to just put like just the right amount of that spice in there. And then that's the thing that makes people go, I'm coming back to this restaurant all the time. Cause it's, it's the subtlety is the stuff that's, that is not, uh, that makes it really alluring. And that's a great word for this guitar. It's alluring. And, uh, so I think that the tremolo system is modeled after the Gretsch vibe. I mean, it, oh, it looks a lot like that. If you've seen a Gretsch or like the Bigsby, it looks a lot like a Bigsby. But it, it, there's something to this thing. I have a friend who is a guy who loves to take guitars apart and Frankenstein them. And he's put this tremolo system on multiple of his guitars because it's weight. There's, there's a lot of mass in this so there's a lot of metal there so that helps and i don't know it's just it's an interesting way it's wired the way it's set up too because you string you put the strings through the back so you you wind the string that way then it goes underneath this roller and then over the saddle and then you know gets clamped in and so it's not really moving. I mean, I, I don't have it set up to where you can move it very much. And I, I don't know that I ever have. I don't think I've ever pulled up on this like you would, like if you're trying to do a Jeff Beck thing on a Strat. I've never done that on this guitar. I wouldn't even try. As I, far as, as, I'm, as I'm looking at the guitar as you're showing it, I'm seeing that there's two knobs. Uh, do you want to describe what those knobs do and how they interact with the pickups? Yeah, so this is a master volume. So, and this is a master tone. And uh, the tone. I mean, that's pretty full range. And then the master volume is great because it's it, it actually is like really useful. Let me turn on. A, so here's a this is a pretty drivey sound. This is a, here's a really drivey sound. Is cool about that is uh okay so you you felt the like the push went away but the top end stuff didn't and that's one of the things like i a lot of times on guitars i don't want to turn them down past 10 because 10 is where all the that's where all the edge is that's where the the treble is that's where all the brightness is and i don't want to as soon as i turn it down i'm like well I'm, I'm missing that and as a guitar player especially in a band setting a live setting I mean, that's the thing that you're listening for is like, am I even here? You know, you got cymbals going, you got keyboards going, you got other guitars going, keyboards, uh, uh, you know, vocals, It's and they're all sitting in the same range. So the, what's great about this guitar is it, it's like a live just guitar into amp, being able to have that flexibility is really great. just in a different way. And then... So the, the, the tone only works on the, the, on the, the uh, humbucker. And then, then you got this, the middle position, which uh, I think that they, they would say that it's intended to come close to a Telecaster. Or that single coil thing, it's intended to, that's what they mean by ingenious wiring and kind of voodoo wiring, <laughs> that they would take this, a single coil, I mean a humbucker pickup, and just with the flip of that switch, it sounds like it's, now gone to single coil. I don't think it actually is. I think it's still the the full humbucker. But then with the P90, I mean that's pretty quacky, like a telly. Mm. 
Yeah, that's that. I noticed that right when you flip to the middle, I was like, that sounds like a totally different guitar. Yeah, it's really, it's wild. Now, I have to be honest, I use that pretty rarely. Yeah, that makes sense. But that's probably because I'm super enamored with the other sounds. Yeah, it seems like it's a it's an option, but if you were to play that guitar, and you know, we mentioned Joe Walsh, uh, Mike Campbell, um, those sounds I would think of. I mean, maybe Joe Walsh is kind of famously a little bit of a Les Paul and Fender guy. Yeah. But Mike Campbell, I always picture with more Gibson style um, guitars. Um, but I guess he plays Telecasters as well. So I, I would imagine that middle allows them to kind of not have to grab the Telecaster or the Fender. Right. If they just want to stay with that for multiple songs yeah. or... Yeah. Um, and, you know, one one of the beauties of... of I, I mean, this is a high-end guitar. Um, one of the beauties of high-end guitars is that... I mean, let's say you're you're the kind of person... I mean, I just have guitars because I've been playing as a professional for a long, long time. So I've collected them, not as a collector, but as a person, I need a tool, you know? And um, so if that's you, you know, you're looking for a guitar and I'm trying to find something that I, well, I'm going to invest in, I want to use it. You definitely want something that's going to give you as much flexibility as possible. I mean, un unless money's no object and then, okay, then... And you have a roadie who can always hand you guitars. But also I'd imagine that, like you said, it feels great. So if you could get that great feeling, your hands are warmed up, you're on stage. Why switch to another guitar if you're able to still kind of get that sound you're looking for? Um, because if it's comfortable, I think that does play a large factor in the live feel of a guitar. For and sure. So it's, it's cool that they have it, but I could totally see, I'd probably be like you where I'm like, I don't need this middle sound, but yeah, yeah. Um, I could see with kind of the legacy and who's drawn to it, um, how that middle pickup sound could be really useful. So as far as legacy guitars go, this is a newer guitar. Yeah. If someone's coming from a Gibson or a Gretsch or a Fender, um, Rickenbacker, which of those crowds do you think is going to be drawn to the Duesenberg the most? Probably the, 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 probably more the less polished kind of crowd, I would think, maybe. Because it's, uh, not that it's, because it's a similar, like if that's the sound that you like and really enjoy, this would be uh, a guitar that that definitely rivals that or comes complements that and does that very well, and then has some other options to it. Um, I think that the people, if you're like a Gretsch person, then you'd probably just stick with the Gretsch if that was if that's your only like you know I mean you know if you've got the Gretsch T-shirt and you've got the Gretsch patch. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, which is great. Um, uh, it's a very similar guitar in that respect to a Gretsch, but still a little different. You know, Gretsches uh, are fine instruments for sure. Uh, this is, feels a little, like one of the things that they talk about is that this is, this is put on a Plex machine. So that means that every neck, when it comes off the factory, is exactly the same as the one that came off before it and the one after it. Um, maybe Gretsch does that. I don't know that. I feel like their guitars feel very, very different one from the other. This is, I don't think that's true of the, of the Duesenberg model, the, any of their lines. Are they, do we know where their factories are or how, how they're produced? Yeah, I, it's, it's in Germany. Oh, okay. So is Duesenberg a German brand? It is. I didn't know that. Uh, I don't know why my brain was thinking American. Um, so it's German, which is, is Rickenbacker German as well? I think it is. Or is uh, you know what? I don't know that is for sure. Britain. I don't, I don't know. know. But European, I'd imagine both Rick and Bob. Yeah. But then my Rick and Bacher has a U.S. flag sticker. What does that mean? Well, this is this. I mean, I, I'm I, I'm friends with the, the gentleman that runs Duesenberg USA. Okay. So his name is Nathan Foley. Great guy. Um, he, uh, um, he, he is the person that runs Duesenberg USA. So he's the person that runs all of the sales and i mean he's the person that's he's importing the guitars from germany okay yeah and he's the he's the sole person that does that in the united states let me look up real quick just so we know duesenberg um 
What's funny is people will always ask me, so it's like, is it made by the same people that made the car? Yeah, no. right. The first thing that comes up is the car. Yeah, no, it isn't made by the same people. <laughs> that would <laughs> be cool. Which is funny because Rickenbacker, as a guitar, also has a name connected to a pilot and a race car driver. Isn't and that I, wild? Those, those are unrelated as well. Well, well uh, maybe it's not unrelated. What does it tell you about, about companies and, and... I mean, guitar playing is kind of a... It's kind of a grr thing, you know? It's, a, <laughs> it's like, I want to get in a plane and fly it and go upside down. And then I want to play rock guitar. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not seeing on their website, but I think, oh yeah, German and English. So they have, yeah, they have to be German, I would imagine. Yeah. Yeah. So that's cool. Okay. So then it's a high quality, um, kind of Les Paul style, kind of its own thing. Yeah. Um, we touched on the trem. We touched on the intonation. Um, the neck, did you say specifically what style of wood the neck is? Uh, this is an ebony neck. So ebony. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And what does that translate to as far as sound and as far as feel goes? Uh, well, the feel is, I, I don't know that the feel, maybe I'm not smart enough to know the difference between the feel of an ebony neck and a, and a maple neck, but, or whatever others there might be rosewood, but, uh, uh, it just plays great. The one of the things about this neck is that, you know, some some necks have a lot of that. This doesn't. This is a fairly flat neck, and then they've got. That's why I'm talked about the Pleck machine. They have that thing dialed into where it never really frets out. I mean, my guitars I've played. If you were if we were to take a picture of the frets, you people would be mad at me because they're pretty. They need repair. But that's because I like to play it and I don't like to give it to somebody and then not have it for a while. Okay, so I'm lazy or something. Um, uh, but the yeah, the neck is, it just feels great. It's perfectly intonated. Yeah, like... I mean, that's how you want it to play. Yeah, it is. It has that really satisfying kind of like pure tone throughout the whole neck of the guitar, which is nice. Yeah, that, and that was on the middle pickup there. Yeah, beautiful. Would you say there's any other elements of the guitar that we missed or did we mostly cover most of it for you? I think the last thing is that the tuners are, uh, it's an interesting system the way the tuners work. So that's not anything we talked about. I mean, it's not all that revolutionary, but the, the way the, the, the tuners work, I mean, they are intended to be kind of locking, but uh, the string fits inside down there and then you clip it off down at the bottom down here and uh then wind it up but uh the the tuners are completely reliable that's great and it's got a cool little there's the little number of the guitar nice well thank you so much for bringing it today and playing it for us and showing us all the insights behind it i think it's a really cool guitar and i think this is the first time I've ever recorded a Duesenberg was with you. Mm. Do you think they're going to become more popular as time goes on? I, well, I think that there's a, there's a market for them that, that they have going pretty strong. Um, hey, maybe, you know, I, I wouldn't be bummed if this video helped them because I, I really believe in the guitar. I have another one and maybe we can talk about that guitar at some point. That'd be a blast. Um, but, uh, I think that they're very, very, very well made. Cool. Yeah. I, um, if you're, if, if you're looking, if people are looking for a model of guitar that is very reliable, very flexible, and is pretty classy on the look side, I think a Duesenberg is a great model. And the Star Player TV is fabulous. I mean, come on, sparkle. 
It's a great look. It reminds me kind of like a Ludwig champagne totally. sparkle. It kit. totally does that. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, we had a blast talking about the Duesenberg Star Player TV, and we will see you guys all next time. Thank you again, Hans, for uh, showing up and talking about it, and we'll see you later. Bye. Oh.